Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're gonna be doing a Python build. We're gonna be making a directory buster. So we're gonna be able to fuzz different websites and look for different directories. This is gonna be a pretty simple Python build. I think it's about 35 lines of code. It's only two functions and a few variables. This is gonna be pretty easy. If you're new to the world of Python, this will be a great tool for you to start building with. And if you're interested in learning more Python, then you can go ahead and check out my Python course. You can click it right here. It'll also be linked down in the description. Now, if you're like me and you tend to make a lot of typos, this program will be a lot easier if you build it in PyCharm because it's actually going to have a text editor built in for you. I build this in VS Code and it doesn't catch a lot of the typos. So I do make a few typos and I will debug them for you at the end. But if you're unable to figure out how to debug any of your typos, then you can go ahead and click my GitHub link down below and you can just copy the code or compare your code to my code at the end. And if you really can't get it to work, you can go ahead and copy my code and then use that program. But I would not encourage that because this channel is all about learning and it would be better for you if you type it out and then debug your own code like I have to do in this video. So with that, if you wanna use PyCharm, that would probably be the best thing for you to do. But I use VS Code because I didn't have PyCharm installed on this particular virtual machine that I use in this video. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. So here we are. The first thing we're going to do is do some import. So we'll import requests. We're going to import our arg parser. We're going to import sys. So from our system, so that way this is going to make it so we can cat in files. For example, if we want to cat over a word list .txt and we want to pipe it over to our python scanner.py, we'll be able to cat this word list over into our scanner.py. So we're going to be using our system for that. And then we're going to say from URL lib.parse import URL parse like that. I believe that is right. Now we're just going to go ahead and create some variables. You're probably not going to know what these do, but it's going to make sense here in just a minute because we're making these variables. So when we make them, you're going to be like, I don't understand what this is, but it'll make sense in the end. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, parser for variable number one and then we're going to be using our arg parse right here that we just imported so we're going to say arg parse dot argument parser and we're going to call this method we're not going to pass anything through in this specific function right here then we're going to say parser dot add argument and now we're going to make this we're going to pass in our base url that we're going to create inside of the function in just a minute so base url so the last variable we're going to create that is going to call a method for us we're going to say args and then we're going to call parser dot parse and it's going to parse the arguments for us and we're going to call that method and now we're just going to take this word list right here that we're going to cat over and we're going to make sure that it runs a for loop and grabs all the words inside of that word list. So we'll say word list equals and then create that for loop. So line for line in sys.stdn. And I believe that should be all we need to do for this word list. We'll just use it later. And now we're going to call our first function and we'll just call it... Um, brute and it's going to take in two parameters and the first one is going to be our args dot base url and the second one is going to be our word list so now we can come up here and we can actually create our first function so our first function we'll just call it um enum and, it, and it's going to see if our function has the http or the HTTPS on the front of it. And if not, then it's gonna go ahead and add that. And then it's gonna see if there's a trailing slash. So for example, if we have yahoo.com, it's gonna see if we just put this in to our scanner.py up above, it's going to check. And if it doesn't exist, it's gonna say HTTPS dot slash slash or HTTP, and it will just go ahead and forward that. So it will also make sure that we have this single trailing slash and if there is no single slash right here, then it's going to go ahead and add this and this right here. And if they do exist, then our function is just going to go ahead and ignore it. So we're going to say if not URL parse inside of our URL 
then we want it to do something. We actually, I forgot to add in, we need to say dot scheme right there. And now if that does not exist, we want, what are we looking for? We're looking for HTTPS. So we're gonna say return the HTTP slash slash. I'm actually gonna leave this as HTTP because most websites, um, if you type in HTTP, it's gonna go ahead and forward you to HTTPS. So we can just leave this like that. And then we can say plus the URL. So it's going to go ahead and add this onto the front of the URL. And we can say return the URL. And now we're going to go down and work on our second function. So we'll just call this one um, our brute forcer. So we'll just say def. What did we call this? Um, we called it brute. So we have our brute right there. And this one takes two arguments. I mentioned them both earlier. We're gonna pass through our base URL and our word list. Now we should be able to come down here. I actually forgot to add the semicolons. I wonder how many of you caught that. It is real possible that at the end of this, I'm gonna to have to do some debugging because I might've spelt something wrong. If I was using PyCharm, it would catch a lot of this for me, but I don't have PyCharm on this specific virtual machine. So I'm using VS Code with Python extension. So there might be some typos at the end that I have to try and fix. So back to the program, we'll go ahead and say we're going to use our base URL and we're going to say ensure that the schema of the base URL is where we need that. And we're actually going to end up using this um, because I forgot to add our trailing slash. We'll go ahead and add that in here. So we'll say if not base URL dot ends with the trailing slash then we're going to say base url plus equals and we're going to go ahead and add that in now so now we have our trailing slash added in there now we're going to go ahead and loop through our word list we'll say for word in word list we're going to say url equals base url plus the word dot strip and that will return back just the word that we need so we'll say try and we're going to give it a response so if the response that we're going to receive back from our request is a 200 then we want it to tell us so we're going to say um, response and we're going to set this up first with our request module right here so the response is going to be requests dot get the url and we're gonna set a timeout to one. You can set this to whatever you want. Um, you can even set it to 0.5 and then your fuzzer would actually run a lot quicker, but it's possible you'll get some false negatives that maybe the file actually exists, but you're running it so quickly that it doesn't have time to actually receive back the information. So I'm gonna leave it at one second, but you can change that if you want. And now we're gonna say if the response dot status code equals 200 we want it to tell us so we'll say print and we'll make this and we will uh, make this an f string and we're just going to say found and we'll pass through the url so that way we know exactly what url it found and then we're going to say else um, we'll print and we'll make this an f string and we'll tell it um, just not found is what we want to see back so not found and we want to see the specific URL that was not found and we want to see the response status code so we can just create our brackets and we'll just say the response dot status code and now we just need two accepts and then we are finished so we'll just say accept um, requests dot exceptions dot timeout and if we have a timeout we just want it to tell us so we can pass in another f string and we can just say time out with and then we can pass in that specific URL and then we'll add one more exception and this one is for an a failed connection so we'll just say accept and we're going to add in the connection error i forgot to request dot connection error 
And if we get a connection error, we want to print another F string. It will just say failed connection with the URL. And I believe that is it. So now we can just copy this and now we can just G edit the scanner.py and we can paste our code in here, save. I can almost guarantee you that I have some kind of typo and then we can cat over the files.txt. This is actually my word list. Um, and then we can say Python scanner.py and then the actual URL that we want to fuzz. I'm going to use my own personal website. So I will paste that in, run this, and um, we have typo on line one. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and debug this and then I will bring you back and hopefully I can show you where my typos are at and you don't have those same typos or you caught them. Okay, so I think I have fixed the typos. So I actually had this not named to our function up here. I think I had enum schema um, instead of just enum. And then we had a typo right here inside of our word list. And then we had another typo down here, another typo down here, and another typo down here. If I would have used PyCharm, this shouldn't have been a problem. But there are the typos places that I fixed just in case you copied over the typos. And if, and if you're unable to get your typos to be fixed or you can't find them all, you can go ahead and go to the GitHub page link down in the description and you can copy this code and it should have no typos within it. So now if we run this, it should work for us. So we actually see now we found a directory we did not find and we get a 404. We did not find and we get a 404. And then we found the actual just base URL. And, you, and that is how you create a directory buster. Let me know down in the comments what tool you think we should create next.